Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Scott Hicks. Welcome to today's webinar, HR Essentials for Leaders, Migrating from Paper to an Online Platform for SHRA Employees Performance Management Cycle 2020-2021. Our presenters today are Angela Revels, Assistant Vice Chancellor of Human Resources, and Nicolette Campos, Director of Workforce Development and Employee Relations. They'll be giving our presentation today. We'll be able to follow through as they share their screen with us. And if you have any questions or comments during the presentation, please uh, enter them into the chat box. I'll be watching the chat box throughout the presentation, and then I'll moderate any questions and answers at the end of the session after the presentation that Angela and Nicolette give to us today. So as we proceed, uh, please do know that the presentation will be recorded so that it can be posted to Online Learning's YouTube channel. You'll find there all of the presentations and webinars that we're giving as part of this series for employee growth and professional development. And please know too that in order to make that recording as, as good as possible to mute your microphones during the presentation and then only unmute at the end if you, if you have a question that you would like to ask out loud. So again, thanks again for joining us today and I'm going to turn it over to Angela and Nicolette. Great. Thank you, Scott. And we also have Sheila Hardy here with us as well. So um, there'll be times when we'll, we'll defer to Sheila. She just gave me the, the shop look. <laughs> so thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to spend some time learning about this migration from our paper evaluation to our online platform. We're, we're excited about it. We know it's, it's a little difficult for, for some and I've had to learn to navigate it myself, but I think it's going to be um, really, really useful to you, to your supervisors, and, and to you to use it as well. So again, we have with us Angela Revels, myself, and Sheila. And what we'd like to do is we're going through the details of how to use the platform is we'd like to just cover some information on completing the whole evaluation cycle. It's a, a one-year cycle typically, so it comprises the um, performance work or work plan. Some people call it performance plan. Some people call it a work plan, but it has the work plan that you're going to be working from throughout the whole cycle. And then there'll be a mid-year review followed by the evaluation at the end of the year. And so for SHRA employees, typically the cycle runs from April 1st to March 31st. Of course, this year due to COVID, we had a slight change. So our um, cycle will still end March 31st, but of course it is decreased to nine months. So before I started, Angela, would you like to say a few words? Good afternoon. I hope everyone can hear me. Thank you all for taking this opportunity this afternoon to join us. Um, I think the biggest thing that we hoped that you'll understand is more about Yes, there's an online platform and the logistics of that, but overall, how as an employee, um, how are you going to professionally develop, meet your expectations, and even exceed those expectations? And if you hit a hiccup or run into a roadblock, um, how to work with your supervisor or leader to ask for additional resources or assistance in helping you overcome potential challenges or roadblocks? Exactly. And it needs, it needs to be a conversation between you and your supervisor, because, of course, we've got to ensure that the, the business need is taken care of for your department. But we also want to ensure that you receive what you need in terms of resources, whether that resource is in terms of tools or, as Angela mentioned, professional development. And we'll mention Skillsoft um, a couple of times throughout this presentation. I know you're aware of it due to the um, Braves kickoff modules, but also there are about 40,000 modules that you can peruse through the library. Just take a look, spend some time going through to see what may be useful to you and your professional development. If you have any questions about that, of course, during the presentation, but also beyond, we'd be happy to, to work with you and help um, put together a performance plan for you. So as you know, it's your supervisor's role to make sure that everything's taken care of in the department in terms of the business need to make sure that each department is fulfilling the need of the institution. It aligns with our strategic plan, but also they want to do that in partnership with you. So making sure that you're familiar with how your specific role ties into the strategic plan. I know you've heard the chancellor say 
multiple times over that we all have a role in changing lives through education. So I think it's really important that, that we all understand how our role changes those lives. Um, I think also you should um, just make sure that you're comfortable having those conversations with your with your supervisor, letting them know, you know, what would you like to be doing in the next year, next two years, five years, 10 years, and kind of make a plan as you're going along. So yes, we're gonna make sure that the department's taken care of, but we want to make sure that you're getting everything you need as well. And I am trying to advance the PowerPoint, but having difficulty with that. Angela, if you could just talk a little bit about the, the reason for moving to the online version of the, of the evaluation. Sure. So, of course, the number one reason is efficiency and um, saving trees and moving from manual processes and uh, retrieval processes. So, um, unfortunately, uh, months before the end of the cycle, then we are overwhelmed with calls or Sheila's overwhelmed with calls requesting copies of last year's review or um, I can't access this. And so with the new platform, um, leaders along with employees will be able to log into the system and review their um, current review, the work plan, um, a mid-year if one is conducted and or the final. So I think you got your objectives there. I'm trying not to steal your thunder, Dr. Campos. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So we're hoping that this is going to be, you know, more useful to you. So I don't know if your desk looks like my desk, but I have lots of paper everywhere. And sometimes just trying to, you know, get hold of that piece of paper. By using this online format, you'll be able to log in whenever you would like to log in. You can take a look at the performance evaluation. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the performance plan that you created, make some edits if you wish. So hopefully it will just be a whole lot easier to use. You'd be able to, as it says on the on the screen, you'd be able to keep track of everything. You'd be able to retrieve that information and then the process be a good steward of our paper. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the details of how to use um, this particular process. You'll see that the URL is there. And again, we want to remind you that this um, will be available to you on the Office of Online Learning's YouTube channel. I can also send you the PowerPoint if you want just the PowerPoint to be happy to do so. Um, but you just go ahead and log in and you can see the login page there. If you have any difficulties, please let us know. And once you hit the submit button, this is the landing screen that you will have. So you'll notice in the top right corner, there is a, a group box. It's actually a drop down. You'll notice that I have security in there. If you're entering the system as an employee, you will drop down to employee. And then you'll notice on the left hand side, there are three blue dots. And when you click on those, you'll have employee portal show as you can see with the red box here. So you want to go ahead and click on the employee portal and this will bring you to your landing page. And you'll notice on the landing page that there is a tab that says home and right now it's indicating that there is one action item to complete. So it may be that um, there's one or there's two items to complete. So always make sure that you look there. And then you'll notice on the left, there are two links. So I'll, I'll jump, so I know there are some supervisors online as well. So if you're a supervisor, you're going to click on my employees reviews. If you want to look at your own review, you'll click on my review. And so you have your action items and this is actually a link. So whatever is open for you to, to complete at that point in time, that will be the link open to you. Here you'll see that it's create a performance plan. There's a date and then your status is upcoming. Once you've completed or acknowledged your performance plan, it will then say complete. So you'll notice we've created a test user here today for those of you who are familiar with Ben Simmons. We're thankful to him for helping us with this. And you'll see here that there are multiple components to the whole cycle. So in terms of the weighting, there are two components. We have institutional goals and we have individual goals. Each one of those will be worth 50%. So as your supervisor is creating your work plan, they're going to keep in mind those two goals. And part of that, part of their decision will be 
what is it that we're working on this year? You know, what are the projects that the department needs to work on? What do I need you need you? What do I need you to work on? And so at that point, um, the weights may be different, and they'll look at what the business needs are, what your needs are, and weight them accordingly. And then we have a, a set timeline. Now there is a slight change to the paper version. So in the past, there's not been a requirement for a mid-year review, but we are requiring that now because we want to make sure that you don't have any surprises at the end of the year or if there are any changes. So for example, if mid-year, the department is given a new project, um, perhaps then they want to add that to your performance plan and evaluation. So we want to make sure that we do a spot check, make sure that we're on task with everything that we highlighted in the performance plan, and then make any um, alterations if we need to. Angela, do you have anything to add to that portion? So I'll just speak a little bit about um, employees engaging and ensuring you're part of this process. And under the individual goals, you may have some personal development goals that you want to accomplish within the year, as long as it's still part of, you know, the mission of the department or the requirements and expectations. So someone may have um, presentation challenges, for example. And so one of their individual goals could be um, participate in the LMS, the learning management system, and uh, log into a module for communication skills or effective presentation skills or attending uh, sessions virtually or um, participating with some colleagues uh, who we know we have some great presentation present presenters on campus and participate in a couple of their presentations or classes and so that could be a personal goal I know Nicolette talked sometime about uh, uh, employees requesting Excel or some Microsoft Office uh, with this COVID and this pandemic, it really opened up the teleworking opportunities and using WebEx. And so those may be some individual goals that you want to help enhance and professionally develop in your current role. Great, Sheila, would you like to add anything? Also, I would like to add that if, um, when you set your goals, if something happens that's uh, unexpected, that happens within the, your area and it causes you to be off track with your goal, then at that time, whenever your supervisor meets with you, at least it gives you an opportunity to say, you know what, we, we were unable to achieve this goal in this quarter or this um, uh, this time frame. Could we look at this and extend this before you get to the final um, end of, of your uh, performance appraisal? So look at that. And it, when the supervisors meet with you, it gives you an opportunity to say, okay, hey, you know, this is on track or this is off track so that you're not just looking at it at the end of the year, you're looking at it at midterm too. Exactly. And I think that that's a really important point, Sheila, just making sure that your supervisor is aware if you run into a, a roadblock, you know, it's certainly okay for you to just reach out and let your supervisor know and, you know, be able to figure out together what needs to be the, the next plan. Do we need to alter the, the milestone and the overall deadline of the project? or what, what do we need to do in that case. So you'll notice then that um, the, the different parts here are located on the screen. So we've got the performance planning, as we mentioned, the mid-year cycle review, as we mentioned, and then you'll notice that there are two off-cycle reviews that are noted as optional. So Angela, what might be some circumstances that a supervisor may choose to conduct an off-cycle review? Um, I think like just uh, echoing Sheila's point, if there is a new project, um, if there is a new report that the system office or the, or the state required us to um, prepare a new initiative, um, some of the Brave Book initiatives, maybe mm -hmm. you're going to be included in a um, subcommittee of some sort. So you could, you may want to put that on the review and um, have it be part of the annual process. Um, unfortunately, there could be a challenge and um, there may be um, some con documented counseling sessions or some warnings or some other things that are going on. There could be life challenges. And uh, so there may be an opportunity that someone would need to do an off, uh, off cycle to just kind of keep us on track or document why we may be unable to meet that. Um, so there's a 
several options that you could do an off cycle. I think the biggest thing and the theme we want to repeat today as an employee, when I'm called in for my review, I don't want to be surprised. So having that ongoing engagement and opportunity to, between the employee and the leader and the employee or the supervisor to ensure that I understand the expectations and what am I going to be reviewed on for the past cycle. Exactly. And Sheila, do you have anything to add? I would like to add that it, um, just so you know, it is okay for the employee to request to have a, 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 another meeting. It doesn't always have to be the supervisor that sets up this meeting. If something is going on and you think, okay, we need to notate this on my review and it's not time for a cycle, um, cycle review, it's okay for the employee to initiate this uh, meeting. So just so you know that you don't have to wait on your supervisor to initiate the meeting. You can initiate it as the supervisor, can we have this meeting? Great, thank you, Sheila. And then you'll notice anytime there are any changes made to, um, to the platform, you'll notice at the bottom right-hand corner to make sure that we save a draft before we hit next. And so with the institutional goals, you're probably familiar with these. 50% of your evaluation is going to come from the institutional goals and the other 50% from the individual goals. And then um, different weights can be placed on them, but the lowest weight that can be placed on any of the goals is 5%. So here, and you'll find this in your platform as well. So here we have the goal. So we have expertise. And then there's a description as to what we mean by expertise. Your supervisor can assign a weight to that area. The next one is accountability. Again, there's a description. So we're all clear as to what we mean by that particular goal. And we've added a weight. And again, your supervisor will decide based on the, the business need uh, which goals will be weighted. Oftentimes what we're seeing is because there, there are six categories. One is a supervisory category. If you're not a supervisor, often what supervisors are doing is just doing 10 across the board for the five components that are not supervision. So you'll see the other ones here. So we have customer oriented. And I know we're going through this kind of quickly, but again, this will be recorded. You can go ahead and you can log into your area of the platform, to the online system, and I can send you the PowerPoint. Just send me an email, I'd be happy to send it to you. And again, here we have the weight, team oriented, what we mean by team oriented, and the weight. And of course, your supervisor is going to put comments in there as well. So how specifically are we going to address being team oriented in our department? And how is Nicolette particularly going to um, reach that goal? So we, we've been telling supervisors to make sure that you're very specific, very concrete, so we all understand. And certainly as you go through this with your supervisor, ask questions. If you're not clear, on what your supervisor means by a particular item, certainly ask them to clarify it and to note it here in the system. We have another institutional goal of a compliance and integrity, what we mean by that, and again, the weight. So you can see here the last one is supervision. So if you are not a supervisor, your supervisor can do one of two things, either just put a zero for the weighting or just remove the entry altogether. And then of course, we're going to save again and move to the next slide. So with our individual goals, and it may be that you already discussed this last year and that you've moved your goals sort of at the, at the end of last year's cycle, you noted some, some goals that you want to work on, so it would just be transferring this, them to this platform. So we have some examples. I want you to note how we how we did this. So we put for the goal number one, improve efficiency. Well, that's a very good goal, but we want to make sure that you understand what your supervisor means by that. We put a few items in here, but then again, you'll notice they're kind of vague. So if your supervisor puts in here, be a better team player, what, what does your supervisor mean by that? Because what you think is meant by being a better team player may not be what your supervisor thought when he or she wrote it in there. So just making sure again that we're clear, just having that conversation, this is really meant to be a discussion and it's supposed to be useful to both you and your supervisor. So just making sure that you ask any questions that you need to ask, get any clarification that you need. Sheila, Angela, anything to add in this area? I think that's good. Good. 
And then you'll note that the supervisor here put 15%. So we want to go ahead and add an entry. We want to make sure that we have three to five goals for the individual goals. So again, we have the improved efficiency, it just moved over to the next page. And then another goal is project management. So we want to make sure that your supervisor is indicated there the name of the project and then what exactly they want you to do. So here you'll see some examples of deadlines that maybe you, you might want to ask them, hey, could we put some milestones, some, some check-in dates so that we don't get to the end of the project and suddenly I'm not completed because of something that's out of my control. So resources, for example, or with COVID, it pulled many of us away from those items that we were working on and had to work on some other projects that were unexpected. So just making sure again, add some milestones, add some check-in points. And then as you're looking through this, make sure that you're reaching out to your, your uh, supervisor and requesting those meetings, as Sheila said, if you feel it's needed. And perhaps we're gonna add another entry and certainly making sure that we save the draft so we don't have to retype and moving to the next page. So talent development, and Angela talked about this a little bit already. So we did find when we um, did, I was the, the lead for Braves Book Initiative 5 last year, and one of the items that we did is we sent out a survey to campus and we asked uh, leaders what it is that they needed in terms of professional development. We asked supervisors what they needed as supervisors, but also what their employees need. And then we asked employees, what do you need as employees and what do you think your supervisors need in terms of professional development? And so some of the items were, were more general. So it was, you know, leadership development, but some were very specific. And Angela already mentioned that um, Office 365 items were quite common, needing some extra instruction or modules on Excel. Um, but even items such as WebEx, um, what are some of the other platforms that we use? Microsoft Teams, I know some people use those quite frequently. We often have to do surveys, so we, we do those through Qualtrics. So maybe you want to send out a survey but are unsure how to use Qualtrics. So those areas. Angela, any additions? I think that's great. I think this is an opportunity um, to broaden your professional skills and that of the position. And many times, you know, you may not uh, move to a different department through a promotion, but there may be some development within your current classification in the SHRA world. And so you could add this additional development or this opportunity to learn. Or um, sometimes, you know, you're making yourself valuable and marketable and um, someone finds out, you know, Sheila is great at this task. I'm going to tap into her skills. And so you'll be able to add that to your plan and, and say, yes, I can use this software or yes, I could lead this project. Great. Sheila, anything to add? No? Okay. And then it's always making sure that we save before we move to the next page. And then we're going to finish up. So again, we want to make sure, and you can um, assist your supervisor, just ensuring that 50% of the, the weighting is located in the area of institutional goals and 50% in the area of individual goals, and that 5% um, is the lowest amount or a lowest weight on any one goal. Once it looks like we're good, we move over to the actions in the top right. So as you can see, you can print a copy of your plan. You can save a draft. You certainly want to make sure you do that and then you can go ahead and hit the button to complete. You'll notice here then the next uh, page, it will show you that your plan is mar being marked as complete. So you are, you're done in terms of the action items that you had waiting for you. So you'll also notice that there are some progress notes, opportunities for progress notes. So these can be really helpful. We're so busy and, and again, trying to decrease that paper trail, making sure we're keeping track of all the items. So go ahead and um, encourage your supervisor. Uh, maybe they, they forget, they're unaware of the progress notes. So you can go ahead and ask your supervisor to put a progress note in there and you can revisit it at the uh, mid-year cycle. That's often really useful as you're having those conversations. When you click on the progress notes, you'll see this box and you get some options here. So you can uh, choose the program that you'd like to look at. 
Of course, your supervisor will drop down to specifically you as the employee. And then we can have a couple of options on the type of progress note we have, give it a title and then a comment. Of course, we've put a very general comment in here doing OK, but you want to make sure that there are some specifics. So what is it that I'm doing really well at? Because it's always good to know that you're on the right track. And I don't know about anybody else, but it is always nice to know that you're doing a good job. And then also, if there are any challenges, let's note them in there that we've recognized that um, you know, we've run into a roadblock with the project. Indicate what that roadblock is and perhaps just outline a short bulleted point of an action plan as to how we're going to remedy that. And if we're at a mid-year review, perhaps you could go then and right at that point and schedule within your outlook a meeting with your employee to do one of those um, off time reviews, so those interim reviews, and spot check and see if those resources have come into play. Again, the idea of this is, is a communication throughout the year with um, you and your supervisor so that at the end, you know exactly how it's going to be completed. There's not going to be any surprises. All right. And so if you would like, if, if the, there's not enough space within the comments, you can attach a document. So if there's something that you've typed up to assist your um, supervisor, you can go ahead, send it to them, and they can attach it to that progress note, and they can open it again for mid-year review or the final review or an interim review. Go ahead and create the note. And then in our example, this remained a, a private note. So it may be me as a supervisor. It was to jog my memory to make sure I ask you about a certain item or how we're going along. And um, oftentimes we could have a private note and then we could have a shared note so that we can both review together. So we did just want to overview the whole cycle. I know with the paper, it's a little easier to, um, if we if we miss a step, we can sort of run, run around to our supervisor and make sure we get those signatures. But we just wanted to, to let you know the process because it's a little bit different in terms of having to do step by step. And there's, um, there's no way really to work around the steps. So for the performance plan or the work plan, as some people call it, there were three steps or items. So one, and this is a, a screenshot of my plan. So Angela Revels is my supervisor. So she's going to create the, the performance plan and then she's going to forward that or when she hits submit, it automatically forwards to her supervisor who's Vice Chancellor Virginia Tache. So Virginia is going to take a look at that, make sure everything that um, is in there looks good. We haven't forgotten anything. And when she goes ahead and hits submit, it automatically forwards to me. So I'll go into my own review plan and it should have one action item and it will be, as you can see, step number three, acknowledge the performance plan. So I wanna make sure I take a look, make sure my supervisors included everything or maybe since we had the discussion, there may have been some items that I saw within Skillsoft and would like to add those to my plan. You certainly can. You can make edits and your supervisor can make edits all the way up through step five, which is acknowledging the mid-year review. Um, but even at that point, you'll know that with COVID this year, we were past the mid-year point. Because you can attach a Word document, you could outline any, um, any changes. So for example, if we've passed the mid-year review and we had certain projects, but then this year we had COVID that came along, easily your supervisor could just outline you know, a quick narrative as to why we moved away from project A and we had to move to project B. And that would easily explain some of the differences when we get to the end in completing the performance plan, some of the differences as to why it wasn't in the initial plan. Um, Angela or Sheila, any, anything to add in these areas? I think it's very important that you remember that when you're reviewing the part that has your name on it, once you click acknowledge, then you cannot go back and unacknowledge. So when you're reviewing the plan and you want to, if there's something that you have questions about, before you acknowledge it, you might want to make contact with your supervisor if you have any questions. Because once you've acknowledged it, then it's going to go on to the next person for them to go in and do an action plan. Great, thank you. 
And so with the mid-year check, as you can see, that that's your supervisor. So step number four, that's my supervisor, Angela Revel. She's going to go in and take a look at the mid-year review, just as we've mentioned, spot check everything that we highlighted. It's also a good time if you're keeping a, a running Word document, for example, of any, any items. And I certainly recommend that you do that because it's amazing how many times we do things and then we forget. So if you volunteered to... Um, assist with a, a program, whether it's a student program coming out of student affairs that, you know, they were requesting volunteers, or if there was um, somebody in your department needed assistance in, in their area of the project and you assisted them, certainly keep a, a running document of that so that when the mid-year review comes, Angela's going to take a look at it and she's going to have a meeting with me. We're going to discuss it. I can then have that document and we can discuss, hey, you know, I'd like to add this to my mid-year review because you know at the end of the year you're going to have ratings and we'll talk about those in just a moment but you're going to have ratings and you need to make sure that you have everything that you've completed documented so once angela's gone ahead and, and submitted her mid-year review it comes to my queue as the employee and i'll go in and make make sure everything looks good if we need to make any edits i can send it back to her but if everything looks good i can go ahead and acknowledge as well. So then we're done. So this year we're looking at the mid-year review being completed um, around around November. I would say December, but I know we're getting really busy for the holidays and we may forget. So I will probably send an email out to supervisors the very beginning of November just to remind them, hey, you've got the mid-year review coming up. Make sure you schedule some time with your employees. And then for the, the, the finish out, those are steps six through nine. Angela's gonna take a look in terms of the uh, the work plan, and now there'll be a, an extra drop-down box where she can actually rate each specific goal as to whether I did not meet the goal, met the goal, or I exceeded the goal. And Angela, I'd like you and Sheila to just take a moment and explain what we mean by does not meet, meets, and exceeds. Angela? Sure. So let's think about um, a bell-shaped curve. The majority of all employees or our workforce are going to meet expectations. So that'll be our bell. You'll always have some outliers. You'll have some that aren't meeting expectations and you'll have some that are exceeding. Um, the question we probably get more than not is how can I exceed? And so I like to say, let's recognize our rock stars. Who's hitting it out of the park? And so when you're completing the review on the employee, you should describe specific achievements or specific accomplishments of how that employee hit it out of the park. I would continue to encourage that this is a, a two-way street. This is an engagement opportunity. So sometimes as employees, you know, we have to share our moment and shine. And so we may have to remind our leader, remember this project and here's the status of it, or I completed the project early and under budget and save the university money perhaps. And that could be an exceed. Sometimes uh, leaders will put, uh, you know, the Angela is coming to work every day on time. Well, that's meeting expectations because that's the expectation. Attendance is an essential function of the position. Um, and so exceeding attendance wouldn't be coming to work every day. That would be a meet. Um, a not meets examples could, could simply mean we didn't complete the task or we failed on the project. Um, we didn't have any engagement. We didn't talk about it. There wasn't a mid-year review or a check-in. And um, so the employee just failed to do the project or COVID showed up and I wasn't able to launch. I launched my project, but I wasn't able to complete it because, you know, all of my efforts were diverted to something else. Um, and Sheila, I'm going to let Sheila talk a little more about if you do receive um, a not meeting, the steps, uh, some counseling should have occurred or some written warning. So Sheila, you want to share a little bit about that? So if um, if I receive a does not meeting um, expectations uh, performance appraisal, then the first thing that I do is I, you know, I contact the supervisor and had there not been any conversation about any kind of documented counseling session or any type of written warning 
or um, a PDC, Performance um, Development Plan, if I haven't received anything, if your supervisor hasn't sit down with you and had some type of communication with you where you need to improve on something, then I go back to the supervisor and say, listen, we're not going to give them a does not meet expectations because you haven't told them where they have fallen short. You haven't told them where they need to improve things or you haven't gotten on to them about their attendance. or it, it, They think that everything is okay unless you have said something to them. So I don't let them wait 12 months and say you're not meeting expectations if they have not met with you. If they've met with you and they've done documented counseling sessions and done written warnings and those types of things, then it's expected you that you would get a does not meet expectations because somewhere along the line you have fallen short of something. But now if you get something and you have improved, they can certainly document that in your performance appraisal and say that, you know, they did talk with you, things have improved and, you know, you're, you um, understand where you were falling short and think you completely turned around. And I can understand that. But if you get a do not meet expectations, there should be some kind of documented counseling session, something documented in this performance plan as well, because we do have an opportunity to meet on that quarterly and give you an opportunity to improve where where you've fallen short so we're not going to allow, allow them to give you a does not meet if they have not met with you if something is fallen short of being um what it should be great thank you so angela we're on step six so angela is going to take a look at my annual appraisal she's going to for each one of those areas, so for the institutional goals and the individual goals, for each one that were, was in there, she's going to now hit that drop down box. And so for each one, she's going to put does not meet, meets, or exceeds. We do want you to know that if you receive a does not meet in any category, you will not be able to receive an overall rating of exceeds. So that is important to know now as we're going into a new cycle. So once she's completed that, she's going to hit submit. And that again will go to her supervisor, which is Vice Chancellor Tache. And she'll take a look and make sure everything looks great in terms of following all the process. Each one's 50%, nothing less than 5%. Make sure that we she's not done and does not meet and then given an overall rating of exceed. So everything looks good. If it doesn't look good and there needs to be an edit, she can send it back to Angela. She can make the correction. If everything does look good, then she'll go ahead and approve. And at that point, that's when Angela and I meet and we review. So we can do that virtually. If we can do it um, socially distanced, we can do it that way. And we can take a look and see step by step, have that conversation. If there's anything that, as we said, if you've been documenting along the way that, you know, well, don't forget that um, I help with uh, we, we packed, I think, that I forget how many thousands of bags that were packed for students um, to return. So um, Student Affairs had put out a call for volunteers for that. So maybe you volunteered. Make sure that's documented. Again, if Angela's forgotten, we can just remind her and she can add that to the appraisal. Once we've had that conversation, she does step eight, which is confirming that the appraisal review meeting has happened. And then it will forward automatically to my queue and I acknowledge the annual appraisal. So it doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with every single item, but it does mean that I have acknowledged that we have met and that I've seen the overall evaluation. Again, we can um, we can do some progress notes. You can make notes if you um, would like to make some comments about any of the items and then you go ahead and submit. But we wanted you to take a look at this because, as you can tell, there are so many more steps. And because it's electronic, it, it's difficult and almost impossible to get around those. So we have to make sure we've already got the, pro, the performance plan in place and acknowledged before we can move on to the mid-year review. So that was a difference. Angela, um, Sheila, anything that you'd like to add before we, we complete our presentation? I just want to add as a reminder, you know, um, as a leader, we are doing our employees a disservice. So our employees deserve a timely review. And I am the first to confess that I'm guilty and um, putting this off. This sometimes is more of a taxing requirement. And um, because the state says I have to review a SHRA employee, I'm going to do that. And as leaders, we should want to provide 
feedback and assistance or mentoring and developing. And so take advantage of the opportunity to have that engaging conversation. And, you know, we want to see our students succeed, but we also want to have our employees succeed as well. And so it's, you know, the tool sometimes can be perhaps not the easiest or the most user friendly, but the goal, regardless of the tool, is to, um, you know, evaluate our employees and provide that feedback that they deserve. Great. Well, we do want, we do want to say again, thank you for taking time out of your schedules to, to learn how to use this platform and, and learn a little bit more about this cycle. Sheila, do you have any, any parting words? No, I just think that, you know, if you have any concerns or any questions when it, whenever your supervisor is meeting with you, um, just jot things down before your meeting so that you um, don't forget something that you would like to ask them or something that you would like to be put in the, into the appraisal. It's very important that you're prepared whenever you have the meeting so that, um, you know, you're prepared for the, the meeting as well as the supervisor is. And if... Um, an opportunity comes where you there was something that took place that um, you were unaware of at the time that the the work plan was put together, and then you're aware become aware of something. Say, can we add this to the performance appraisal for this year so that you know I can get credit for attending this or I can get credit for doing this? You know, it, it's never too late to add it in. You know, if it's only in one, the first phase of it, but it's never too late to get recognized for something that you're doing outstanding that it could be a part of the appraisal so that it could make it a better appraisal. And and never look at it as, well, they're never going to do anything with this appraisal. You know, they, they never give us a raise. You know, we work for the state and they never. Yes, it is. I mean, because you never un, um, don't sell yourself short because you could be working for somebody that. Um, has notated how outstanding you do a good job and then that person leave, the next person coming in, sometimes all they have is a piece of paper that somebody wrote something, um, you know, really good about you so that they have that to go on when they're moving forward to do the appraisal for the next year. So don't think that it's something that's not doing any good to do it because it is doing, it is good to make notes on that so that someone coming in, that somebody has a look at it in the future, that there's something good to say about you and something good to read about you. Exactly. And I will I will say with the um, with the Skillsoft platform, there is a tab that you can actually retrieve a transcript. So that might be something you want to consider doing before you have your final evaluation. Or even if you've done some additional modules by the mid-year review, that's one way that you can document and you can um, have your supervisor upload it to your mid-year review. And I would also just put a plug in for this presentation. You're here now and it was not a mandatory requirement, but you're here because you want to learn, you know, more about how you can assist your supervisor, create a, a more effective performance plan and a more effective evaluation at the end of the year. So make sure that you document this session as well. Well, again, thank you. And Scott, if you'd like to facilitate any questions, Thank you very much, Nicolette. Thank you, Angela, and thank you, Sheila. This has been a wonderful presentation. There's a lot of wonderful com compliments uh, taking place in the chats right now. So thank you again for this very helpful presentation. Uh, there were two questions, and I believe Angela answered both of those in the chat, uh, providing some extra assistance to the person who asked those questions. They were about um, sort of sharing the work of entering some of the data and when a staff member or a faculty member is shared between two supervisors. So it sounds like some sort of more complex questions and Angela said she would reach out to that person. I also want to note that there was a uh, multiple requests for the PowerPoint and I know that you'll be able to share that um, afterwards. So thank you in advance uh, for doing that. It's been very helpful. Certainly. And I want to say too that this is just uh, one of many series, many uh, events that we have. Uh, the Office of Human Resources is working with uh, the Office of Online Learning and the Teaching and Learning Center to bring together in one place all of our career growth and faculty and staff professional development uh, needs. Uh, we're putting those on the UNCP homepage. If you click on faculty and staff, it'll take you then to the list of all the upcoming events that you might be interested in. So we do hope that you'll join us there for those. And I will say too that you'll have access to this recording as early as tomorrow when it's uh, uploaded to the Office of Online Learning's YouTube channel. 
which all you have to do is Google YouTube UNCP Online Learning, and it will take you right to their channel where you'll find not only this recording, but the other recordings as well from other events. So thanks again to the uh, present uh, presenters. This was a wonderful presentation. Thank you, Angela, Nicolette, and Sheila. And thanks to all who attended. We look forward to seeing you at future events. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.